Well, hey there, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Rate the Record podcast, episode 39. Feeling Ooh. fine. Here we are in time. That kind of rhymed. Do, 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 do. That would be my air horn if I had a... Uh, I forget what it's even soundboard. called now. Soundboard. I was going to uh, say yes. The third episode in which we referenced the soundboard. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And your soundboardless hosts for the day are Chris and? Uh, Savannah, and she's sad. You're always sad. So that's, yeah, that's, I know, a, that's a cop out. Mostly about the soundboard thing. We might be sad, but or Savannah might be sad, but, but the thing is, we're here now to do episode 39, so thank you very much for joining us on today's episode. We sure hope you like what you hear today, what you experience, and if you do, make sure you hit that like, subscribe, comment, rate, share, follow. All of those things help build that musical com- community that we're trying to do oh so much, and it's getting better and better by the day over on the okay. audio platforms. Make sure you hit those, those ratings, those really good ratings, leave some comments, build us up in the charts, and of course, YouTube still trying to get that 100 subs, and we want to give away records once we hit 100 subscribers mm-hmm. getting closer every single time we do these episodes getting closer but you can help that so make sure you're subscribed and you might even win a record out of it it's amazing i do want to recognize those who are leaving comments under our videos on youtube um i enjoy reading and engaging although me personally i uh i tend to read them and forget to respond but i see you I see you and I appreciate the the engagement and thank you so much for listening, whether it's this, whether it's our new music reviews, whether it's anything else we release. Thank you very much for uh, liking and letting us know that you did like it. And if you don't like it, you know what? Let us know. We still want to know. Yeah, Savannah might not respond, but that's where Chris comes in. The vast yeah. majority of responses that we do have always been me. But regardless, you still jump in every once in a while. It's all good. I do. I do. Especially if they're directed towards you specifically. <laughs> I'm yeah. just the general answer guy. <laughs> I, I actually, I outsource that to my secretary. Um, they just happen to have the same name. So, I mean, coincidental. Um, thank God we're not paying them. I, I'd be sweating oh, bullets God. right now. Speaking oh. of sweating bullets, goddamn Megadeth. But speaking of Megadeth, we're not doing Megadeth either. Today is episode oh, 39. I've been talking shit on Dave Mustaine lately. Anyways, oh, it's episode 39 today. It's a Savannah pick kind of episode today because yeah, she yeah. has chosen Bush and their album 16 Stone but we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here because before we start talking about music and albums and everything of the such we do like to give a little disclaimer just to make sure that when we discuss these albums we can be cool about things we're not going to be dicks we can agree to disagree on things but just the idea is we're just trying to have a good musical conversation that disclaimer is as follows the following thoughts and opinions we're going to discuss regarding this album are strictly of our own personal interests. We are not professional music reviewers. We are simply two friends having fun discussing and listening to music. We encourage respectful discussion and friendly banter in each episode, but we do not condone and will not tolerate bullying or belligerence based on the opinions of ourselves or others. This podcast is a casual and for fun project, and you are welcome to take what we say regarding the albums we rate with a grain of salt. The, the choreography is getting so much better on this. One day, like, I'm going to have a whole routine just going as I read. But you know what would make all of this better? Uh, if we just did one read, recorded it, and played it on a soundboard, sound can get, machine board. Can we, get, can we hire someone from Fiverr to do it with broken English? <laughs> yes. Yes, we okay, can. Excellent. And like it's like only half of it's kind of recognizable, and then it's, other than that, it's like whatever. Or we get we'll hire Tom DeLonge to sing it with his weird pop punk uh, articulation. Where are if, you? Okay, <laughs> if if I can't get a sound machine board, whatever, um, we're not getting him because we are going to be put so far into debt that I will never get one. We'll pay him in free alien promos. We'll talk about aliens from now on. Stickers. Ooh, let's give him holographic stickers. I'll put it on my stickers. forehead, my big stupid forehead. Look at that. <laughs> holographic stickers. That gets that gets everybody. Okay, I'm on board now. Holographic alien stickers. That's even better sci-fi. Those ones that you put a doll like a dollar in at the mall and you put it in the machine, you know? Back in my day, it was 25 cents. But speaking of yeah. alien stickers, we're not talking about them. <laughs> we could be. 
<laughs> oh, actually, there's a song on today's album called Alien. Perfect. This is a great transition. We are talking about Bush and 16 Stone. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure most people know Bush, especially us in the alt rock radio phase of like our 30s. Yeah. Oh, I fucking love it. We oh, grew, I love it. We grew up on shit like this, and here it is in today's episode. Savannah chose this album yeah. today, and so she's going to go ahead and tell us a little about Bush and their album 16 Stone. Okay, so. Bush was formed in London, England in 1992 by guitarist Gavin Rossdale and Nigel Pulsford. By mid-1993, bassist Dave Parsons and drummer Robin Goodridge had joined and completed the lineup. They were signed to Hollywood Records only a year later, but after some changes at the label, they ended up on Trauma Records where they would stay for the rest of the decade. It only took until December 6th, 1994, for Bush to release their debut album, 16 Stone. Five singles were released from the album, Everything Zen, Little Things, Come Down, Glycerin, and Machine Head, were released from 1994 to mid-1996, just six months before their next album release. Who the hell well, releases singles for two years? Uh, oh, <laughs> my God. Probably Taylor Swift as well. I mean, also Katy Perry released like one of her albums was like every song oh, yeah. was a single. Yeah, I was Teenage Dream or Prism or something. I know far too much about Katy Perry and I don't even like her. But more about Bush. Thank you. <laughs> um, Bush, Clive Langer, Langer, and Alan Winstanley would produce 16 Stone at Westway Records in London. The album reached number four on Billboard 200 and has been certified six times platinum in the U.S. and Canada. But get this, only silver in the U.K., no, no notable award wins or nominations were given for this album. And like a lot of other albums that I have chosen, I have only heard the singles. I've never heard the whole album. So I was in for a ride. But you know what? That That's kind of a, the, the uh, really interesting dynamic between us is where um, <laughs> you, you will choose albums that you're not, not all the time, but you'll more yeah. likely choose albums that you're not super familiar with just for an excuse to listen to them, especially in this context. <laughs> yeah. where Whereas, like, every album I picked is like, I really like this and I want to listen to it again. <laughs> yeah. Well, because, like, I, I want to, like, it's no surprise that I, talking about um, 90s alt rock, that's definitely where my wheelhouse is. I love all that stuff. So I will listen to all the stuff that I'm familiar with that I've heard a bajillion times. But when it comes to whole albums of those things that I've heard a million times, it just, it... I don't know, in some way helps me understand the things that I already like by kind of expanding on the things that were created around it. Yeah. So, and I, if I don't force myself to listen to something new, then I'm just going to listen to the same, like, um, what is it? Repeat Spotify playlist that I've been listening to for the last three years. Something new. And then she listens to a 90s alt rock album on the show. <laughs> OK, out of 12 songs, I've only heard five. So, I mean, I would say that's more than 50 percent. I, I was going to heard. I was going to comment on the singles like I know three of them, but I didn't know the other two. Like I knew really? Come Down Machine Head and Glycerin. I'd never heard the yeah. other two. Oh, Really? Oh, so th wow. those were new to me. <laughs> See, that's that's where my constant listening to the radio from like 94 to 99. But even then, I was like six years old when I started listening to this stuff on the radio, you know, in the car at home. So it's a peak time for me. See, I, I mainly started with much music uh, in the 90s and everything like that. And for two American viewers, that's MTV and two European viewers. I have no idea. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know the equivalent over We're in trying. Europe. We're trying. You, yeah. you probably know what one of those two are. But regardless, uh, yeah, radio didn't come until the 2000s. But that's past the point. It's time to start talking about 16 Stones since we're yes. kind of. Or are you, were you you were done talking about the album, right? Oh, 100 percent. At this point, I already forget. <laughs> yeah. You know, what? we might as well just fold like pack up the episode. It's done. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. We're done. 
I'll just give the rating right now. I scored this album A, and just kidding. Anyway. Ha <laughs> ha, fooled ya. No, we actually got 12 songs to get through. So let's start with song number one, Everything Zen, apparently one of the singles that I just wasn't aware of. <laughs> really? That is very shocking to me. But I've you know what? There are, a lot of, there are a lot of things that I don't know that are surprising to others. As there well. are five songs by Bush, and we kind of talked about this off camera. Five songs by Bush I'm aware of, three on this album, then Swallowing Chemicals Between Us. Like, those yeah. are the only ones I'm actually aware of other than that like bush is a mystery to me i never really listened to them when i grew up i would say maximum 10 for me and that's over every single album they've ever released <laughs> oh, 10 still a decent amount that's a whole record on in of itself this is true this is true so what no. do you got for everything zen um so i do like the wailing guitars to begin with um to be honest, listening to Bush makes me feel like I could just pick up a guitar and play this immediately. Is it because it's time. very simple? <laughs> it is. It is. Um, although I know that I can't just because I don't have even the most basic skills when it you comes to power chords. You could probably play Glycerin. Let's not lie. You could probably play uh, Glycerin. Maybe. Glycerine, Glycerin, whatever. Anyways. <laughs> maybe. But yeah, it's just like, I don't know. Have you like, okay, now I know that you said that you haven't you're not really familiar with them um so i guess this is more of a hypothetical question um but uh have you ever seen them play live because i swear to god it is like watching a bear paw a cooler at a campsite it just looks so loose and without any method but i mean it still looks good but like that i, I can only <laughs> begin to guess what the hell you even mean by that because both references kind of fly over my head i've yeah. never been to a campsite where a bear paws a cooler i can imagine what it looks like but i don't know what it actually does look like yeah no like well i've never actually seen it in person but it's um i don't know how how else to describe it other than i can't i can never see when like certain people play guitar, I can't see their fingers on the individual strings or really the formations their hands are making. It just kind of looks like they're palming the neck, but making different sounds. And that's what it kind of feels like to me because a bear pawing a cooler is just that frantic, like they're not, arti they're not, um, it's not articulate. I, I can't think of the, the word, um, but uh, they're, they're not like, maneuvering anything they're just slapping at it and pawing at it and that's kind of how i feel like the guitar playing is in the majority of these songs well at the very least for the music i can say like bush is stacked full of power chords that's what oh, they're called God, yes it's the three note just like you can do it with two fingers you can maybe do it with three if you want to put the pinky in there but a lot of guitars don't do that <laughs> yeah i get a hand cramp that's why i say i don't think i could do it yeah i'm definitely not a pinky user unless i'm doing like individual notes but anyways yes yeah, so, yeah. Uh, with everything zen like again my first exposure to the song apparently and album in general um you obviously have a big post grunge feel going right into the beginning of the song and like throughout most of the album, like understand like I write these notes in order. I don't go back and fix anything. So yes. anything I yeah. say now could likely be a blanket statement yeah, uh, or like it could be repeated in certain songs because again, I don't go back and change things, but yeah. Uh, post grunge feel definitely here. Very messy, kind of punky, but just also kind of like generic rock in a way. It came through really loud, obviously, but it doesn't feel like the best album starter, this one song in particular. But then reflecting on that, I'm not certain what else would fit in this spot. So maybe like just neglect that point, I guess. <laughs> um, the main riff automatically reminded me. So actually, that's it's, I'm glad I wrote this. So the, the, the main verse riff to this song reminded me of two different songs and I couldn't pinpoint which one. I had to listen to both of them. So there's... 50 Mission Cap by The Tragically Hip. And there's also Keep On Rockin' The Free World by Neil Young. Interesting. Because, like, it's, like, the same damn thing. And I'm just, like, you're, you're going to start this album on, like, a familiar riff that's, like, far beyond you type thing. Okay, I, I, if you want to catch attention, that's great. Is Wait, in, uh, maybe I missed it in the intro. Is this their first album? First album. So debut, like, nothing else debut. before. First song, okay. first album. Good, because I made a point about this later on, but I'll mention it now because I, I think I read that it was their first album. I just wanted to confirm. Yeah. Um, the, songs like this, this whole album really uh, kind of suffer from first album syndrome. And what that basically is, I made that up, is just basically where you don't have your own sound yet, but you play on every influence you have because that's how you start to develop your sound. And this 
blanket statement whole album plays on that a lot like i don't think bush has a sound in this album uh yeah. they they play on a lot of what they like i hear allison not allison chains uh sound garden here i i've kind of picked up on a few sound garden riffs in here and then again like tragically they probably didn't listen tragically but neil young they probably have heard of neil young yeah so i don't know like that's just something that i wanted to mention about that you know i'm gonna listen to this again against those songs and just go god Damn it. Because I, I, I didn't pick up on it only because I have heard the song many, many, many times. I I, I literally, because when I heard the riff, I paused the song and then listened to, not both in full all the way through, but like the first like, you know, 30 seconds type thing. Because that's all you need. And I was like, oh my God, it does. Like, this is so similar. It's, it's freaky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get that. Um... So this is another blank again. Blanket Sleep is not the first song, especially just not editing things. There's a time and a place for very crunchy distortion, which is all over this album. I mean, like that's pretty much all it is. But this song just feels like it's kind of making excuses to use as much of it as possible. Yeah. Like I, I don't feel like they needed to go all out with it with the distortion. They could have dialed back a, f- a little bit on certain parts, but like they've just all the way through, it's just like super crunchy and everything like that. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It made it feel a little uncomfortable. Um, you uh, actually wait, is this it right here? Yes, it is. So that note does come up here. You can tell this is their first album verbatim. I'm reading this, it feels like they're wearing their influences on their sleeves, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, it's it, that there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, like other bands I've like have done that. I'm a musician, my very first album did that, like Nine Inch Nails heavy inspired. So I'm not gonna yeah. shit on that. Just gonna say though, Bush does not have a sound by this point, <laughs> yeah. But my last point is that I do like Gavin's vocals. They are clean, but not too clean. They're still like a little uh, dirty and everything like that. So that kind of fits. It suits enough for this particular song and the tone of this song and everything like that. It's not entirely outstanding, but they do work. Okay. That was uh, negative, positive. Ne- that was a... Uh, that's going to be the entire yeah. album. Spoiler alert. Just uh, I... I there was a lot of negative down. to say, but I tried to say positive too. I, I actually tried to balance it out pretty well. It's like you're you're swimming with someone and you're drowning them, but then you let them come up and then they take a breath and you're like, just for enough nope. air. Yeah, just to drown. I don't know again. how to swim, so I'm floating <laughs> on you. <laughs> um, I I have always uh, liked the two chord hook. Um, I don't know if it's just the sliding up and down the neck that I like. Um, it's always got me. Um, I am starting to wish that we did do lyrical breakdowns because, um, and now this is the blanket statement that I have for the album. Um, I just assume the lyrics are a dictionary and a washing machine because I have no fucking idea what is happening in any of these songs at all. The analogies are just beyond my comprehension. Can I just jump in real quick on that out before? Cause I know, I know I'll forget is, um, two notes on that. First off. At least for this album, because I can't speak on other Bush albums and I have no opinion on them. He's not a good lyrical writer in this album <laughs> at all. Don't I don't dig I don't really dig a lot of his lyrics. And you will hear second note, uh, just scroll through my notes real quick. You will hear that on a song coming up pretty soon. And how I actually did do a bit of a lyrical dive because it's like Oh yeah, because I didn't Excellent. This is because it's one it's this one song on this album in particular where I heard him singing, I was just like stop i need to know the meaning of the song and i need yeah. to know where these lyrics are going because i hate this excellent good i really look forward to that so yeah. my last note to speed run to that note um i definitely see how this was a single um it's something i would a hundred percent listen to while blasting the radio in my chevy cavalier but to be fair like you can see why it's a single but that this is also why it wasn't the lead single too yeah oh yeah it was it's uh I, I don't want to spoil the whole album, but I mean, for those listening who have heard it, uh, it's very, very easy to discern the radio friendly singles. And this oh, was absolutely they because the, I find that the at least the ones I'm familiar with, like, again, come down machine head and glycerin. Like, we'll talk about those later, but I will say about them now. They do stand out just enough from this album that, like, you can discern them as their own kind of bush track, whereas I, I don't want to say too much, but I mean. Not every song on this album does that. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of other songs, though, I guess we'll just jump in right into song number two, Swim. And um, I want to I want to read, the, again, I read a, like a lot of notes that I like to read in verbatim. I try not to, but like yeah. this one I have to. 
Oh, I do that too because I think I'm hilarious. So I'm like, everyone needs to hear. Oh, this. good. We're both comedians. I'm glad it's oh, not yeah. just one of us. Oh, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> Although you've please. made that point before. So, <laughs> yep. So, straight off my sheet here, maybe this isn't the first time I'll say this for this album. And I can promise you now with hindsight, it's not the first time I'll say this on this album. This literally sounds like it was written by a like a teenage band in high school rehearsing in one of their basements. Really? Just, I don't know, something about the, the opening riff immediately screamed to me like high school kids, like 15-year-olds practicing in their mom's basement. Got to be done before 8, though, because dad's got to go to bed for work. Like, <laughs> I do I do just want to latch on to that, that one point just before we keep going into the song. Yeah. Um, what I have to relate to that is I find the main riff a little hard to grasp. <laughs> so there it is. Continue on. It felt like it was trying a little hard to be like, uh, like super different. Like it's not a yeah. bad riff. It's not a bad song. Although, like I won't say where I rated it. It's not super high. But like, yeah, it's not a terrible song. But I wrote that note in in mind. Uh, I'll preface this too. Uh, I don't have a lot of notes for this album, so this is where the tangents are going to start coming in. <laughs> I wrote that specific note about the, the the basement thing is because when I was like 13, 14 years old, I was in a band with uh, my best friend. Uh, and it was just literally me on vocals, him on bass. We didn't have anyone else at the time, but we would get together like three days a week and just start jamming and try to write songs with only vocals and bass. Nice. I'd be down for that. Hell yeah. Uh, eventually we did... Uh, pick up a guitarist and he brought in a drummer uh, and we made a demo that to this day that all of them have had a copy of. I never heard any of the finished product. What? Really? I, for some reason, I have a feeling the guitarist didn't like me. Like I just, uh, I, I have this, it was never said, but just because he was always like, you know, wanting to hang out with the bass player, but I was never involved in what he wanted to do or like yeah. the product that came from it. So I never heard the demos. Everyone else did. <laughs> That, it's always really shitty when somebody is brought into a project and then they kind of just usurp the sort of control over it. And you're like, bro, we invited you in. What the hell is yeah, this? Yeah, and I, I don't know what he didn't like me for. I wasn't mean to him. I wasn't controlling. Yeah. Like, if anything, it was a band, so it was a group effort. And I was very, we were all encouraging of that. It wasn't just one of us. So, like, yeah. I don't know. But that's a story for a different day. Maybe we'll do a random God. podcast on that one day. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I'd be so mad. Anyways, oh, yeah. anyways. Um, so yeah, with with swim continuing on with this, besides being a teenage basement song, <laughs> I uh, I like the dark, mysterious feeling in the verses and like how it's like mainly driven by drums, bass, and vocals. But here's the thing again with hindsight of this entire album, you'll hear that come up a lot, and the more I mention it, the more I don't like it. Yeah, of how the verses are mainly driven by like a bass yeah. guitar, the drums and the vocals. I have many notes on it. You'll hear them as they come and you'll understand as we go. But because this was my first exposure to it, I was like, OK, pretty cool. I like how this is going so far. Just like I like what they're pushing with this. And I also like how they kind of revisit this riff in this song uh, a little later in the track. But like they end up doing a bit of a change up to make it sound slightly different. So at least they're trying to like put the effort forward to make it like stand out on its own i guess yeah um the messy ending was like an interesting touch to have it definitely fits the style because it's post grunge and everything like that so points for that though i don't like gavin's falsetto yelling at all maybe just don't do that there's something about when he goes into his higher yelling of repeated phrases which again happens many times in this album i'm not fond of that i like his singing voice but when he starts yelling just stop Okay, so a lot of my points are either going to overlap yours or pretty much just steamroll them. That is um, fine. But like not steamroll them where they're like gone. It's just like I'm just adding more layers to what oh, you Oh, own said. me completely. Come on, let's do it. Oh, no, no, God, no. <laughs> come on. Do you honestly think I have something different to say? Um, so I'm just going to read them. I don't. Uh, all in order. Okay. More of the messy sounding guitar chords, uh, but I am enjoying the plucking and the slides that kind of add some punctuation to it. A lot of slide cool. guitar in this. Yeah. yeah like in this like, album, it's got like a lot of moments of that. Yeah. And I, I really like that in certain songs, it's like, like you said, where the verses are just sans guitar, but you kind of hear Pew! in the background. I'm like, that's kind of cool. These little I'm, interjections, I'm into that. yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of into that. Um like I said, I found the main rift a little hard to grasp. Um, so much distortion. Not sure if I like it yet. We're only two tracks in. We shall see. Good sign. <laughs> um, 
the guitar sound is so indicative of the era it came from. It has hints of grunge, but is quite polished and perhaps open the door for like more alternative rock that would to come, you know, like Matchbox 20 or, you know, that kind of. No, like, I mean, it's not like early really? 90s. It's not like early 90s, like post grunge, but it's more like a softened version of it that rode the rest of the 90s. I could list you like 10 and it's not Hootie and the Blowfish, but maybe kind of. I I, I, I could compare it to like a tame version of Soundgarden, like oh, a very yeah. tame version of Soundgarden. That's what this album reminded me of. Yeah. And it's like, it's definitely more polished. It perhaps opened the door to, you know, more lighter things to come. Um, but I don't see the song being stuck in my head, even after multiple listens. Uh, I I wouldn't skip this song, but I would probably be sitting there waiting for it to be over so I could just continue the album. And with the, uh, the aggro screaming at the end, uh, it sounds too strained and too much like a performance and less of a real emotive outburst. It didn't feel, it gave me nothing. It just gave me, hey, how loud can you go? I didn't like that. Yeah, if, if, if you want to do these like raw kind of screen, like not screen, but yelling, it, it doesn't have to be like picture perfect, but like don't do multiple takes. It feels like he probably did a handful of takes and they just went with one because, yeah, this doesn't sound like the first take. It sounded way too restrained. Just, I, I didn't like the way he did it. Yeah. It's just, I don't know. It felt weird to me. And it, it only being the second track is like, oh, fuck, what's the come? Spoiler alert, it happens again. <laughs> ah. But we'll keep, uh, I guess we'll just kind of move on with that yeah, then. So yeah, yeah. song number three, Bomb. And my very first note speaking on like playing on your influences wow this song doesn't sound like nirvana at all <laughs> this yeah. immediately when i heard it I was like nirvana <laughs> like that's really it. yeah Dang, I'm, I'm not catching on to these uh these influences but i feel like if they're presented to me side by side i'd be like yeah i see it I see well this it. album again is 94 right yeah okay so nirvana's already at their prime uh so i mean within their own genre obviously but yeah that i don't know that's why i just kind of I, I heard the riffs and even in the style of singing, I was just like, okay, so we get it. You like Nirvana and you're really pushing that forward. Now, first you did Soundgarden. Now you're doing Nirvana. Okay. Yeah. Just, Dan Ross still actually dated Courtney Love uh, later in the nineties. too. Who so. didn't date Courtney Love in the nineties? Trent Reznor did. And he's my favorite fucking, well, actually, I don't know if he did, but it's rumored that he at least fucked her at least one uh, or the other. Ew. Yeah, I know. Ew. Ew, I don't even think she showers, but anyways, continue. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to go on about Courtney Love now. Okay, so <laughs> all right, so um, I do like um, again. This feels like a blanket statement that can sit be said through multiple songs. I do like certain guitar interjections throughout the verse because that's like pretty much every verse where it's like yeah. bass drum vocal. The gu guitars kind of just come in out of nowhere and they sound kind of cool. That mixed with the occasional synth strings that would make like brief appearances as well throughout the song. Yep. A, a little more enjoyable for me this time around. So I definitely made notes of that. As I said, I try to like, you know, overlap the good with the bad and this and everything like that. Yep. I don't think I've written this, written in this many negative things about an album in a while. This is probably going to spoil a little bit, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Um, a little early. Uh, I didn't really have much to say for this song. It's one of the shorter ones because most songs are like four minutes on this album. This yeah. one's like uh, just under three and a half minutes. And I mean, I wrote that it was maybe a little too early on this album to have like the extended noisy feedback outro. Yeah. Uh, but hey, whatever does it for you, it's fine. Uh, usually like I don't dislike these endings either. Actually, I kind of really like the noisy kind of endings to songs and everything like that. And depending on what you do with it. Yeah. But I don't know. You're only three songs in. You haven't really made a point yet, in my opinion. So, I mean, I don't know. Maybe wait until a little later. <laughs> This song just doesn't feel like it flows to me. It kind of felt like there were too many ideas that didn't really mesh together. Uh, I, thought, yeah, I thought that this might be a slower song, which I then thought perhaps a little early to tone it down, but okay, that's fine. I would have appreciated um, that actually. Oh yeah? Oh yeah, I would have dug it. Um, 
I didn't like when it had that like weird loud part breaking up the quieter, nicer bars because it felt like it was like the Kool-Aid guy just busting through a wall. I'm like, I'm just trying to live my life, please. Like, what is happening? Um, like you had mentioned the synth strings, I'm definitely into them quietly in the back, but they are faded out or ousted by the guitar and drums, not soon after they start. So that kind of, I really wish I could have heard more of that. Um, I would have loved if it was half and half, um, sort of like the, uh, like quiet and then sort of get louder at the end and then, you know, trail off or louder and quieter, whatever, but having it sort of split up like that made me feel kind of weird, like a sort of tug of war with my emotions, yeah. I guess. Um, and I did enjoy the solo and the quote bridge that accompanied it. It seemed to end oddly to me. Um, it started to ring out after the bridge, but would you even call that a bridge if there's nothing coming after it? Like, would that not just not be a cliff? Something along the lines of that, yeah. Like, I don't know. It can get kind of confusing in songwriting because then you sometimes you just have to refer to things as like sections, which yeah. can get like kind of complicated too. Yeah, that that was all for me. It uh, I don't know it. This spoiler, this one was not my favorite at all. Same. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. There was. <sighs> There were things I kind of like, uh, some things I liked about the song, but yeah, like the synth strings in particular, though, it felt like a forced layer, Oh yeah. if that makes sense, because like, I don't know, like it was there and it sounded nice, but also it didn't do much to enhance the song. It was very brief. It didn't do much sonically for the sound at all. Like there didn't, it wasn't really a, even a texture worth noting. So yeah. it's just like, they kind of threw it in because like, Hey, maybe this will sound good for a minute. Yeah. Like, so I don't know, like it just, it, it's, it's hard for me because I know that the song, I mean, not the song, but this album was like highly praised and everything like that. And like, it got a lot of accolades, but at the same time, just like looking back on it now, maybe it's because of hindsight, maybe it's the curse of hindsight of just like, nothing's really working on this so far, especially for a track like this, where like, it feels like they're forcing layers out just to like sound different. Yeah. Maybe it was just like the, uh the whole i don't know um I, I don't know if it was like a capitalizing on the sound at the time where it's like oh we want another nirvana we want another this we want another that and then they found it and they were like oh my god yay you know oh, thank they, god they did not find another nirvana yeah. with this one <laughs> or or if it was just like a um we haven't had much that sounds like this so we're you know yay but i mean there were tons of stuff like tons of bands and songs that sounded like this that came out around and after this even before this though like this kind of feels like it was jumping on the train just as it was too late type thing oh yeah because like you know they, they say grunge died after Kurt Cobain did for example yeah. but like it still survived for a couple of years like to like 96 before grunge kind of just completely disappeared off the map yeah because you had your post grunge acts for a little while too and this definitely being one of them because yeah it feels like they they knew that grunge was hot especially in like North America. I don't know how grunge did in the UK, but with that said, like they probably saw that it was a hot thing. And so they're just like, we're comfortable playing this. Let's do it. And that's fine. But by all means play with, your, with, uh, with what you're comfortable with. But I don't know. They, j it just found, as I said before, it sounds like they played way too much into their influences. Yeah. I can see that. And I, I just also want to note again to anyone listening, I'm only talking about this album. I'm not familiar with their others. So there is no like foresight into their future discography aside from like two singles. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty then. So we'll move on to song number four, Little Things. So, you know, when you hear a song and you like it, but you just never remember the title and no matter how many times someone tells you the title and it's clearly obviously sung in the chorus, you're like, what song is this? What song is this? Yeah, that was this song for me for a very, very long time. Uh, I remember it now because, uh, you know, big brain, but um, I do like the song. Uh, it is a nice contrast for my preferences uh, compared to the last song. Um I uh, I did write that I have absolutely no idea what the lyrics are or what they even mean. Um, but the song is a good itself, lyric writer. 
The song itself, I really like. It is so, so 90s rock to me. And the guitar tone, it just like speaks to my soul because there's just, I I really do wish, and I, I've said this a 38 other times, that I wish I had even one iota of music, not even music theory, but just some sort of, I, I don't know, authority or some sort of knowledge to actually explain what the fuck I'm talking about when I say, oh, this guitar tone sounds good. Because I can't even say like, oh, I like the reverb on it or I like this. Because half the time I'm wrong <laughs> and I don't even know what the sound is. But whatever it is in this song, it sounds like spacey and it's like panning here and there. I don't know. I like that. It's funny because usually this, like, not on every review we've done, but this is where I usually step in to tell you it's like, oh, this is probably what it is, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But even in my very first note, that kind of tells you as to why I don't have an answer for you. My very first note, again, verbatim, just reading it like I wrote it. Only four songs in, I'm already thinking about how this sounds so familiar to the previous tracks. You really? And so when things start to blend in for me, like compositionally writing wise like just it, it's starting to feel all the same so when things start yeah. to blend i start to notice less and less features because i'm just like if if feature will stand out to me yeah then i will point it out like i will immediately like like i'm pulling a hair out of the soup type thing i saw it i'm gonna pull it out and put it off to the side because i noticed it immediately yeah because this hasn't done it so far that's why i'm just kind of like my eyes crossed and i drew a little bit while listening to this type of music when you notice that like your your notes as you're going through them they are just getting shorter and shorter because it's just you don't want to be redundant for every single song when you're just like yeah i'm just going to say the exact same thing that i said for the last six songs oh yeah and well the thing is i, I know you don't like when i pick on this particular but when, when we did uh, grapes of wrath like listen i obviously didn't hate the album <laughs> but the thing is I, I know that like every song it got hard to write notes for yeah. I mean, obviously this happened with the prior albums too, but this is the most recent one in my memory that I could think yeah. where this these notes are relevant. But just like, it's where every song started feeling so familiar that like, what can I say without saying the exact same things, even reworded a bit, like it's going to be the same. Yeah. And so that, yeah, that's what kind of made it a problem. And that's kind of what I'm dealing with in this album here. Yeah. Um. My other notes, I uh, only two more notes realistically. Gavin's repetitive phrasing gets irritating pretty quick. Uh, he does that a few times in Selma and just little, 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 little. Oh, just little, wait until later. Little. Monkey, monkey, monkey. Oh my god. Oh yeah, that's the song called Monkey that's coming up. Um, and then the only other note I have is this. Th <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to take a minute because oh, I'm not a comedian here. I previously mentioned my note about like high school band and practicing yeah. mom's basement. <laughs> I made a note. <laughs> this song in particular as compared to the last one. <laughs> God, this is so dumb. This is the kind of track written by a band who enters the battle of the bands each year and likely gets an honorable mention at best. God, oh, I like this song, God. though. Uh, <laughs> I'm having a good time. God damn it. Having a good time, having a good time. That's Queen. Oh my God. Hold on, hold on. Sorry. <laughs> Just going off that that tangent. That's fine. Okay. So uh, there, <laughs> there was a job I had and there is always good when you start a job and you realize that the people you were closely working with all hate it as well. And they, you start to realize the reasons why they hate it. So that was a workplace I had within the last calendar, no, yeah, within the last, I think, year or so. Okay. Anyways, point is, so I show up to work one day and there's this entire list of things for me under my name for me to do. So I'm walking around going, having a good time, having a good time. And I'm just screaming it. So every time I hear that song, it makes me angry because I will only sing it in anger. Oh, but it's happy anger, though. It's such a happy song. Come on now. Get in the spirit. <laughs> Every time I hear it, it fucking kills me. So I'm glad that you said that. Because I've never told anyone that story. 
<laughs> Fantastic. Now tons of people will know. Oh my God. It's, it is the, it is the most like ironic thing to sing when something shitty is happening. <laughs> I love it. I, I, I will say it's like in episodes where I don't have a lot of notes to say is where a lot of these tangents will come out. And so <laughs> maybe the volume two, <laughs> maybe some people will find these as time wasters. Maybe some people really enjoy listening to this portion of the podcast <laughs> because just like this is what makes us, you know, us. This is our dynamic. Yeah. And this is how the way we do it. So I like if this is any indication of what I have for the rest of the album, then I mean, you're either going to love this episode or hate it. Like, I don't yeah. know yet. We're going to talk about childhood pets soon. Oh, my rabbit Bambi, who's literally oh, buried no. at the side of this house. Oh, no. <laughs> my, uh, my dad I said named it Rabbit he... Bambi, not the deer. I could have named it Thumper, but I named it Bambi. I was seven. My my dad said that he was going to, re- um, I guess, resurvey his yard, so he was going to end up moving his fence. And the first thing I said was, please don't dig up Cleo. He's like, I know where she is. And I'm like, ew. Because <laughs> when I was like five... Uh, my parents buried our dead cat in his backyard and he just has lived in the same house the whole time. So Ugh. Ugh. gotta love that. I had a fish named Cleo. <laughs> so hey, we nice. got something in common. Nice. All right. Well, we could probably just move on. Do you have anything else for little things? Um, pretty much. I like the song. Um, I like that it keeps the same tempo and same feel for the whole song. Could be boring to some, but I actually enjoyed it. Might be exposure therapy. Again, it's one of those ones that you haven't heard, but I've heard a a lot. This was Um, a single, right? Yes. And, uh, the main riff to me is solid and I give it 46 out of 49 little things. The end. That's a lot of little things, even 46. Yeah, it is. Oh, I haven't been checking anything off my list, damn it. Okay, this is going to get confusing from here on out then. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> that's fine. We can move on to uh, one of the singles I finally know as compared to the other two. <laughs> Song number five, yes. Come Down. And my first note is literally, ah, some familiarity. <laughs> <laughs> finally, sweet, sweet relief. All right, what do you got? Uh, The bass intro rattles my chest. I enjoy that. I like the chorus. It's very catchy. And again, I can tell why the singles are singles on this album. Uh, Still with the distortion, it might be the amount of choruses, but I don't feel this is over five minutes long. It just, I don't know, didn't feel too draggy, which is nice. Um, I don't feel like I have much to say about this one other than it seems like a straightforward radio friendly rock song from the 90s and is very likely to be featured on a compilation album yeah like Bush's greatest hits yeah Bush X's greatest hits oh my god yes oh I didn't even mention that not even in our intro no no yeah that was the teaser for uh for last week Tell, Um, tell, tell the viewers who might not be familiar with Bush X So uh, Canada had a band named Bush in the 70s. So when this Bush from the UK wanted to market themselves and their album in Canada, they were unable to under that name and they were marketed as Bush X for a while. I know that there were sort of stipulations and uh, money traded hands for them to lose the X at the end of their name. And now to the, well, I don't want to say to this day, but um, in current day, they are the only Bush uh, referred to when the name is said. So, Yeah, because chances are the label saw something in the current band and we're just like, hey, you know what? We'll it's buy it there. out. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's kind of like uh, the band Crowbar. Uh, they started out as a Canadian band in the 60s and 70s. And then there was a metal band that came out in the 90s in America. Oh, that I didn't know. I have, I, oddly enough, I have heard of the Canadian band, but that's it. (laughs) I I have a classic rock radio show on Sunday, so I definitely know who Crowbar is. Awesome. We definitely played a handful of tracks on the show so far. All right. So yeah, we're talking about come down though. And aside from the familiarity, I mean, uh, cool baseline driving the verse, but definitely getting some, uh, getting tiresome of this, what I refer to as BDV, which is bass drums vocals to drive yeah. a verse so whenever you hear me say bdv that's literally what it's referencing it's already 
popped up many times and again not editing this note at all it comes up more in this album just like many other things do yay it was like billy talent it's like once you listen to an entire album you realize how it's just they take the stamp like you know they kind of add some frills to it but it's like bam songs done bam songs done bam songs done and it's just like the same the same skeleton for the whole album Thank you for mentioning that. So now I can put the card in the top corner so that way we can go watch the <laughs> Billy Talon episode we did. Yeah, but, you know, you're not wrong, though. I mean, like, and again, it, it's, it's, it, I feel bad for, like, picking on it because, again, it's their first album and they're finding their step and everything like that. And no band usually ever does in their first album yeah. unless you're, like, truly special and your first album just knocks it out of the goddamn park. Yeah. Pearl um, with this song, obviously, I have much familiarity with it having grown up with it in the 90s 2000s everything like that so i've always liked the chorus it's very simple very catchy very fun so it has that going for it probably didn't need to be five and a half minutes though i will say that much it could have worked better as like a four minute track yeah but other than that like yeah like i don't know this song has always been entertaining enough but in in retrospect of the entire album it doesn't stand out too much more other than the fact i've already heard it like a million times yeah so I don't know what else I've, to say about that. Yeah, I have I have nothing else. And uh, I almost guarantee that it's on one of those compilations where it's like best of the 90s, top hits of 1995 or whatever, you know. Whenever this particular much, single came out. Yeah, like much, much music hits of yesteryear. I don't know. If it's it was still around, it would be a much more music now. Yeah. Oh my God. I used to watch, I used to watch pop-up video on that all the Because time. it was like contemporary yeah. music and like lighter yeah, alt rock. It. it wasn't actually like much music. Oh my God. I, hey, I, I, <laughs> I, I absolutely love, I guess that's comparable to VH1. Yeah. I actually, I know VH1. I just not familiar with the, con- yeah. like, don't they play like a, like a top, lot of top 40 stuff? Uh, I don't know. They might now. Uh, but then in like the early 2000s, they play corn. They, uh, much more music would play a lot of VH1 shows like uh, Bands Reunited or they would play pop up video and, and shit like that, which I fucking love. I loved all that. Pop up video is pretty great. Oh, yeah. All right, then. So song number six, Body. And I'll just state it off my first note here. BDV again. Yeah, get get really, your, your two whole notes out of, for this song. This really feels like a one trick pony. Yeah. yeah. Like that, that's all I have. Well, not, not all I have, but like that's what I have <laughs> to describe what I'm hearing so far. So you, you can obviously tell right from the bat. I'm not impressed. Yeah. Yeah. No, please, please elaborate. Well, there's certain parts that aren't so bad, I guess. Like I have written like what I assume is the bridge is my favorite part. It's hard to know what's what in this track sometimes. Yeah. Because things kind of blend kind of weird. It's not super outstanding or anything, but like I just like the way it feels. It like it feels and sounds better than most of the other tracks I've heard so far, or, or at least specifically what's on this track. Yeah. And the only other note I have, because again, without repeating myself, I didn't want to write too much. <laughs> Uh, I wasn't super into the false ending. It should have ended on the like the original like quieter note it was going out on for a little bit there. I kind of dug how that was happening. Song went on far too long for not being terribly interesting. Okay. Uh, I, I feel like from here on out, I'm just going to read mine. Like, you know, I, I write my notes the same way that you write yours where you don't go back, change anything. Uh, Something I say at the beginning of the song could be changed at the bottom, but I'll just make note that I'm wrong or I changed my mind or whatever. But uh, the guitar riff sounds a little more clean, uh, but still sort of distorted. So I mean, step in the right direction. I am definitely by this point uh, getting tired of the same sound. Um, the music reminds me of something and I cannot place it. I don't know if it's the tone, if it's the chord structure, if it's the chord progression, I don't fucking know. But you know, when you hear something and you're like, I, this, it's like musical deja vu. And I'm like, is it like I the first it. song where I mentioned, it sounds like either tragically hip or Neil Young. Maybe, but I feel like it's one of those ones where I'm going to have to, because I've never heard this song before doing this. 
So thinking that it sounds like something else, I'm like, I need to step away from this song for a little bit, then go back to it. And then it might hit me. So we'll see. Um, It does sound a little bit more musical, musically interesting. Um, In contrast to come down, this one started to feel long. And although I didn't mind it for the most part, I did want it to end with about a minute to go. Uh, I kept looking at the uh, progress bar. It was just, it was not going fast enough. There wasn't much to offer after that. uh, That really had to, they didn't really have to stick around. They could have just, you know, been, been shown the door. Um, the bass carried the song for the most part, um, especially after I had moderately checked out, I was still listening to the bass during the last minute of the song. I enjoyed it. Um, but, uh, for the most part, it was just kind of a, okay. It, it was there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I felt the same way, just far too long for a song that was not very interesting at all. Yeah what was it like yeah five minutes and 43 seconds like i don't know if you if you got something to say then say it in the appropriate amount of time like listen i'm not i love jam sessions i i love like long songs that know what to do with their time limit yeah but like this is not one of those tracks and there's not a single song in this album that feels like that either so you know the band the black crows right yes so i've seen them live and you you want to go and you want to hear their their hits. You want to hear the songs that you're familiar with. Now, I don't fucking remember that that show at all because all they did was just jam. So they played their songs, I think. Then they just jammed. But none of it was memorable because I couldn't be like, oh, yeah, I remember when they played fucking she sleeps with angels because all it was was like 10 minutes of jamming afterwards and now albeit i was a teenager so maybe my attention span wasn't completely there but it definitely sounds like what you like every time you're like yeah it's too long for you know not offering anything it just fucking reminds me of seeing the black crows where i'm like i wish i could remember that show but all i remember is how fucking boring it was because all they did was jam it wasn't once or twice it was every fucking song you sound like you sound like my girlfriend's dad because he told me once told me a story that he um like grew up as a big frank zappa fan went to go see him live and even had the diamond encrusted tweezers and everything like you know big fan and everything like that yeah walked out of the concert because of the jam sessions and i wanted to hit this man as hard as i could because i'm like what do you think frank zappa is it's a jam yeah. band like uh, maybe yeah. maybe the black crows isn't known as a jam band so like i i get that i guess yeah but that's part of conscious that i love though when they just kind of go off and do their own thing it's just like cool listening to music like as much as i want to hear hits I'm also cool with B-sides, but I'm even better with jam sessions. So I don't know. But like every single song, though, you're just like, oh, my God, like, stop. I'm there for a good time. I mean, like, if I'm hearing, if I'm hearing something cool, if it's a hit or not, yeah. I'm having a good time. Yeah, well, I wish I wish I remembered some of it so I could at least attest to the coolness factor. But unfortunately, my only and, memory was, oh, my God, would you just shut up? I mean, I've been to Prim- a Primus concert and like, you know, they, they jam their bridges out much longer than they actually are. So, I mean, oh. like, you're not going to hear me complain about that. Oh, no, because like, I don't know. I, I guess it's just like, like you said, it, it really depends on how innovative and where they're willing to go, you know. And Bush is so, not that. <laughs> no. All righty then, we'll move on to song number seven. Machine Head, another song that I'm aware of, at the very least. I think, yeah, this and the other one, Glycerin, are the ones that I'm aware of now. Yeah. I remember that I used to like this song, like, back when I was younger, because obviously I've heard the song many times. Yeah. But, like, in context with the rest of the album, though, it just kind of blends in with the other tracks. Like, there's not too much that stands out about this one. But, again, being in my shoes where you maybe only heard five Bush songs, like, okay, not bad. I like what this is doing. Yeah. So hearing this with the rest of the album is kind of disappointing a little bit, to be completely honest. I don't dislike the song. I still do like it because obviously it has that air of familiarity to it. I do like some things that the song does present, like riff-wise and compositionally and everything like that. I think it's really good. Uh It has some good ideas, but it like 
they they don't know how to venture beyond their like own style of writing and composition in this album again being the first album syndrome so like no you won't know that but at the same time it does get pretty irritating like i feel like at this point being seven songs in this album should have been only like an ep with like four or five songs on it <laughs> i was thinking like nine <laughs> like uh, Again, I know it's their first album, but like, damn, it's super stiff. Like, there's just nothing to grab onto in this one. Although this is probably one of the more fun tracks in the album. So, I, yes, I can see why it was a single at the very least. Yes. Um, yeah, this is another song I feel that I could play on guitar or bass really easily. Uh, it's mostly just scaling down the neck, which it's it's fine. It's all right. Um just uh, just speaking of it sort of blending in with the rest of the album, um, I think when I was younger, um, Machine Head, Come Down and Everything Zen, I couldn't pick or I couldn't pick out any distinguishing part of either song. So it was just, you know, maybe the riff in Machine Head. To me, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's part of Come Down or, yeah, that's part of, you know, the other one. So now I can discern them because I've listened to them enough, but those three were always kind of lumped in together for me, which definitely does not help the idea that they sound the same. <laughs> no, yeah, at all. Really um, I do wish that the background ambient guitars slash strings slash whatever that is would last rather than come in for a bar and see itself out. It's like, the band came into the studio, opened the door and went, oh, sorry, wrong room. And then left and never came back. I'm like, ah, like I just, I want something more. I don't know. I want something different. And that's why I said earlier, forced layering. And that's what yeah. it kind of feels like where they'll just add something in for a bit. They'll stab it in, think it sounds cool, yeah, but they won't focus too much on it. They yeah, won't, they won't elaborate. They won't emphasize it enough for it to be important. So yeah, it's like being asked a question and saying like uh, saying, yep. And that's it. You're like, this is, this conversation's going nowhere. This interview like need, is going well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like you need to give me a little bit more. You know, we need to fill half an hour, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. And it's just, I don't know. I, the only other couple notes um, are, <clears throat> excuse me, just, uh, I guess, hypothetical question uh, for the song. I do imagine breathing in and out when directed through song uh, and then passing out. And then that's my review. That's it. I imagine passing out to last week with, with Tomahawk with a uh, flashback. I think it oh was. Oh God! Yeah. Not flashback. There was, there was, there was like a might have been it's point like and the, click. The methodical <laughs> breathing. Yeah. Like yeah, that's yeah. that. And I made a joke about that too. But like, Pat messing on studio. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in. Music. Breathe in. How am I supposed to breathe in and breathe in again? fucking guy well you only go halfway in and then the second half is again because you take then, in the rest of I, your lung capacity and then i pass out and that's my review unless he says breathe in like six times in a row it's like stop he does he does i breathe think in, I, breathe in breathe in maybe <laughs> i'm i'm pretty sure that he repeats it at least three times and all i'm thinking is guy trying to kill me uh but that's all that i have for this song <laughs> yeah no that's fine and uh, I think that you, you've been waiting to get on to this one, though. So song number eight, Testosterone. Guess what? This is my lyrical uh, kind of analysis yeah. a little bit. Excellent. All right. So I, my very first note is, like, given the context. Uh, yeah. By the way, I don't know if I said it. Testosterone is the song that we're on now. Song number yes. eight. Given the t context of the lyrics, it's funny how this song sounds like a grungy version of butt rock. Oh my god. It really does. Yeah. So, like, listen, like, I, I read through the lyrics and I understand what it's talking about. And, like, listen, I'm all about poking fun at to toxic ma I wrote tonic masculinity. It's supposed to be toxic. Thank you, Chris. Yes, I'm all about poking fun at that because it's a bullshit kind of, like, little culture thing and dudes get way too sensitive about it. Yeah. But the lyrics are just painfully cheesy. Like, he mentions about shaving with Gillette. What did, what did Gillette ever do to you? <laughs> and like, oh also the lyrics, hot dog at 7.30 in the morning. I don't know if he's referencing breakfast. I don't know if he's referencing his dick. I don't rem don't know if he's talking about like some sort of generalization of like America. But most songs in this album, but this one included, is written very poorly. 
I would I would eat a hot dog at seven thirty in the morning, and I just mean food. Uh, I bet he means mm-hmm. dick. That's the yeah the hot dog that you don't want at seven thirty in the morning or maybe I don't know I don't know you. <laughs> um, I I now this is like no joke no euphemism or anything. Um, I feel that meals are a weird social construct, and at work I will buy Cheetos from the vending machine at eight o'clock in the morning and get weird questions like why are you eating that and don't you eat breakfast? No, I don't, and this is the first meal of the day, so. I've oh. I've had cereal for dinner. I've had Harvey's yeah. for breakfast at nine a.m. Yeah. I've had yeah, a exactly. burger with fries at nine a.m. Yeah, yeah. I I love stuff like that. If I want to eat it, I'm going to eat it. So I just wanted to mention that uh, if any of you are scared to eat a literal hot dog for breakfast, do it. It is liberating. It'll set you free. Continue. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Although I, I must say, a burger at nine a.m. was pretty good. That was so during good. me and my friend were going to a festival. Though we didn't want to pay for the continental breakfast, they charged us for it. So we're like, "Fuck it, we're going to Harvey's." That's so stupid when hotels do that. Anyways, yep. Hey, American viewers, Harvey's is a burger restaurant. Anyway, <laughs> a lot of references to the American viewers today. Um, so for this song, other than the super cheesy lyrics that are. At the very least, like I like what he's doing with them, but it's just again they're cheesy. Um, I do like the feeling of the chorus. I like the sustained notes as he's kind of singing over top of them. That sounds pretty cool. It actually adds some atmosphere to the track for like once that doesn't happen much on this album. So hey, points for that. Mm-hmm. But Gavin's yelling again though. Stop. Hard stop. Yeah. Um So I did note that this song actually does have some genuine sounding aggression, which is fitting to the title. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Um, I do feel like, actually, you know what? I'm going to do a positive before this. Okay. I do like the bass line. Um, When there is a bass line to note, I will note it because I will fucking recognize it and adore it. Savannah doesn't like bass. This is weird. I love it. Uh, that was, I was going to say that was my first instrument, but it wasn't. Um, I also own a bass. I just, but it's the first instrument you fell in love it. with. Yes. Um, I don't, uh, I don't play it, although I should. Um, I feel like you could replace the vocals and lyrics um, with any one, and it would sound like 14 other songs that came out at this time. Um, I do like the music more than the vocal melody, but. All of these songs are like potatoes, okay? They can be prepared in many different ways, but you just can't get away from the fact that they all taste like potatoes. They're all just a big starchy clump no matter what you do. Like French fries, cool. You look at them, they're cut differently, and they're fried. Maybe they're not baked. They're fried, but they still, you bite into it. Potato, baked potato, potato, tater tots, it looks different. You bite into it. It's a fucking potato. So I am definitely, I'm growing tired of these potato songs. <laughs> Man, I, I think I already made my point about that like a few songs ago, way earlier yeah. in the album. Yeah. We are off. Aye, to, aye, aye. I was going to say we're off to a good start, but like we're, we're like past the half <laughs> point, yeah. the halfway point. So the fact that we're there doesn't hold too much going forward maybe i don't know we'll see yeah but i will say we're gonna move on to song number nine which i've already referenced prior and that's the song monkey 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 sucker monkey 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 got the drip or something whatever the fuck he says i don't know oh my god i was not even listening Mon- monkey with the drip monkey with the drip and i'm like isn't that like a, a now thing to say with a gen z say like oh you, you got the drip sheesh like isn't that a thing that they do Fuck, I'm too, we're too old for this. I, I don't know. <laughs> I I occasionally share a household with a 13 and 15 year old, and I don't even understand what the fuck they're talking about most of the time. They'll talk to each other, and I'm just like, I'm leaving. <laughs> Got that drip. It's, a, it's cap. Sheesh. What does any oh of this mean? God. You I know mean, that mo- the word cap and the word lie have the same amount of letters? Yeah, well, I do know that factor cap is like factor fiction essentially. Yeah, so, but like, hey, look at the we're we're having we're having elder chat now here on the. the I don't podcast. get it, man. I think the last thing I understood was the word swag. 
even then it was just like so that's a good thing right yeah yeah oh my god all right so i'll go really quick through this one because one of my no- one of my previous notes comes back i like the sound of the messy quick strum guitars of the verses it's nice to have finally not have the bdv shtick again yeah because this song actually felt different through the verses it's like hey it's not just that strumming bass line with the progressive drums and then not progressive like neil Peart, but like you know what i mean yeah. uh, and then like just gavin singing over top of it like this song felt a little different in this presentation but again with the whole potato analogy like it looks different not that it is yeah it, it's still gonna go down as a big starchy mess in your stomach and you're gonna be able to eat the exact same amount no matter how it's prepared um he sure does like to repeat the words monkey 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 and i just kept writing monkey for like 20 times oh my god it's to me that just feels like lazy writing it really is the thing is he's done it previously on the album too where he just does like repeat phrasing and like there is a, a a a way to do it that actually fits what you're doing but he's just kind of going off and it's just like this isn't fun anymore please stop don't yell and don't repeat phrases. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, first note just said funky monkey. One rhymes. Two, I thought it sounded kind of funky at the beginning. Cool. I like that. So far, this one, like you said, it does sound a little different. Um, I, I wanted, I want to say that the vocals sound the same throughout the whole album. Even Eddie Vedder has some audible differences between songs. Oh, boy, does he. (laughs) And like, I I guess I phrase that where I'm like, I want to say that the vocals sound the same. But um, yeah, I just kind of finished that sentence with, yeah, no, it does. It just does. Um, The chorus sort of falls back into what we've already heard. And it was interesting but then sort of let me down at the end where it just sort of, you know, you're getting that wheel out of the rut and then it falls into the rut and it digs itself into a farther rut. And you're like, Oh, this is where we live now. Okay. And that's kind of how I felt with this one. Yeah. Like with the ending, aside from like the, um, the vocal repetitions, like kind of annoying me a bit, the ending went a little too try hard. I don't know. Like, again, there's ways to approach this, but just like when it, it, so much of this album feels like it has things forced onto it just because like they want to be hard they want to be edgy in a way and like again playing off their influences but just obviously nowhere near as well so like i don't know it, it's hard to grasp onto much on this album especially in a track like this yeah like i don't know what else they could have done in the ending of the song to be honest like cutting it abruptly would have sucked uh dragging it too long would have sucked Going tr- try hard would probably suck, but I mean it did because that's what they did. Yeah. So like it's hard to know what they should have done with a song like this. But I mean like again, I don't know what they could have done. But like we're this far in, and there hasn't been much in the way of a fresh idea since track one, essentially. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, this this song to me is just another one of those blended puddles in the entire thing like it's you put water droplets on the ground but when you add more water it becomes one big puddle rather than individual droplets yeah for the most part that has been this album so far and this song is no exception yeah we're gonna leave it on that because i literally have nothing else neither do i yeah. and we're getting close to the end two and a half songs i'm gonna, I'm gonna say two and a half songs left. yeah, yeah. all right so okay I, i'm gonna go first on this one because like mine's gonna be pretty quick on this okay. so song number 10 glycerin uh probably one of the more if not one of the most well-known bush tracks yes so i'm gonna read like i have three points and i'm, I'm gonna read completely from the page here no like me just speaking up my ass here I've been trying to stay positive through this review despite all the negative I've been spewing. I'm going to say something bad and then I'm going to say something good about this tracks since the song is way too overplayed. So number one, as mentioned, yes, the song is done to death because of alt rock radio. I've heard it more times than I care to count. This is another version to those of you keeping track at home. This is another version of the Hotel California effect on me. Oh, God. Where it's a song that I never want to hear again, but it's not necessarily a bad track. But keeping on note here. 
It's in the territory of fuck this, turn it off. I don't want to hear it anymore. That's where I feel the song lies in the pantheon of music in my head. I don't fault the song for this. I fault the radio. And so because of that, I don't want to hear it. It's the same thing with Hotel California. Heard it way too much on the radio. Hated it for that. But point two, like Hotel California, it's not necessarily a bad song. It took this far into the album to change things up, so a ballad feels very welcome in this one. I'm not sure that the grungier touches in Gavin's voice suits the song properly, but it is pretty much pleasant all the way through, more or less. The strings and synth are very nice. Simple guitar riffs work very well with the minimal, min, minimal eh, minimalism of the track. There you go. So again, like Hotel California, I don't hate the song, but fuck it, turn it off. Okay, uh, I didn't wipes, feel that wipes way. Wipes brow, sweat off brow. <laughs> um, I don't know. There's very little songs that I feel that way about. Um, I could play a song to death. Oh, no, that's a lie. Fucking Semi-Charmed Life. I hate that song now. Uh, well, going? So, anyways. <laughs> it's just Cover fucking strike. going. It's always, it's always used in the wrong context and, and it's, no one knows what the song's actually about. Uh, it's about fucking crystal meth. No, it's about I, being happy and just living your best life. <laughs> I've listened to far too many uh, Third Eye Blind songs to know it is definitely not a happy song. But yeah, I guess that if come to think of it, maybe that is one of the songs that is definitely approaching uh, your uh, so-called Hotel California sort of. Not many songs situation. reside in that territory, but sure yeah. enough, this one does. Yeah, uh, this one for me, yeah, it definitely doesn't. Um, I could listen to it forever. I won't, but I could. <laughs> um, it is the last single off the album. Uh, finally, a genuinely slow song. Everybody pull out your lighters. Um, it feels like it should be played on an acoustic guitar, but I do enjoy that it's on an electric and the strings behind it definitely add something to it. It's not just there for vanity. It's there for substance, which I enjoyed. Thank you. Um, there is something that feels kind of touching about this song that I never really noticed or appreciated. Um, I didn't feel that there was much of a breather in the song without lyrics, which is kind of okay. It kind of adds to the feeling like he's singing to somebody in real time in yeah. the same room, which is kind of nice. Um, I don't really have much bad to say about the song um, because maybe it's because I have heard a bunch of other Bush songs um, aside from this one that when I think of them, I don't think of this song first. So it hasn't approached that annoying territory yet. So it's hitting endearing. And then once that wears off, yeah, it's gone. Well, a couple of notes. First off, like, how could I have not reached the same level with you? If we, if we we listened to the same type of music and like stations type thing growing up, how did Glister not get overplayed in your system? <laughs> like, um, because I, I don't like know. here, like I I grew up in Hamilton, so I like I listened to Edge One Hundred Two a lot when I was growing up, yeah. and like, yeah, Glycerin comes on like two or three times a day. So I mean, fuck it. <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe maybe I just liked it. I guess. Um. I would say uh, <laughs> now I don't want to be like a, a downer because, you know, you know, time has passed or whatever, but you know, those, those sort of memes now making light of childhood trauma where it's like, you're in your room listening to the radio where your parents are fighting out in the living room and blah, blah, blah. Well, I listen to a lot of the radio and um, yeah, I just, I heard a lot of what was presented then, and I didn't really hear the song too often at all. Um, also, where I grew up, which is more northern of the province. Still in Ontario, um, but like way the hell out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I would, what, like over a thousand kilometers away. Oh yeah, it's, um, it's quite the drive. <laughs> yeah, uh, listening to sort of older music as well because we didn't have uh, more than one rock radio station. It was just one. So we were getting- had one lot. station that just played everything. <laughs> well, it was, okay, so- This hour's my, rap, next hour rock. <laughs> my, my recollection, there was the AM station, which was kind of more- 
I don't know. I want to say oldies. They ended up turning into like the pop station. But yeah. what I was remembered was the country station, the rock station. So it was this peppered in with 80s rock and like Bon Jovi peppered in with like foreigner and all of that stuff that you would definitely listen to on a cross country road trip through small town Canada. So definitely well, didn't get the uh, overplaying that uh that you may have heard. Which is interesting because like I live, I, I grew up in like a larger town than you obviously, I can't even call it a town. I can call it a city yeah. because it's, again, yeah. I said Hamilton, like Hamilton is like the armpit of Ontario. I can say that being a lifelong Hamiltonian. Yeah. Uh, and we are now Toronto junior. Cause that's what we're turning into. So we're just trash. Anyways, come at me, Hamiltonians. <laughs> um, growing up I'm at the radio station. I'm here. So well, yeah, exactly. You're way the fuck out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here, tourist. Ah. Anyways, um, it's just funny that you mentioned that because I don't know. There was there obviously like a choice of radio stations growing up here in Hamilton because like we get some from Toronto as well. So we like yeah. we have like a lot of encompassing things, not as much as we do now, but like yeah, we had like I remember the old country station, I remember the rock station, we had a pop station like adult contemporary, and that was mainly it with me growing up. So like yeah. we kind of listened to the same things. So I'm just surprised in your neck of the woods that uh, it didn't like come off where glycerin would would have been like one of the more overplayed ones yeah. as compared to like any other bush track for example specifically yeah i don't know i don't know i would did you ever say... have a sorry did you ever have like an overplayed bush track like what one would you consider to be overplayed swallowed which i like that one is <laughs> that yeah. one's not overplayed here so that's crazy to me, that was the one that was played the most but also as time went on i think they were playing a little less of the older stuff so it just the the scope was just moving with the times. Even though Swallow is not that much older than Glycerine. Yeah, I know. I know. And I don't even remember any, like, um, I have a maybe memory of a couple still shots of a Bush music video. But aside from that, I don't think I've even ever seen it. was like a, a slow-mo video. video for Swallowed, yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then that's the one. Then that's the fucking only music video and I, I've seen. And I think Chemicals Between Us had like some sort of like wind blowing on them in slow motion too. I I, I don't know. It's been a while. That I, that I've never seen. No. Only half paid attention. Anyways, that's a long yeah. ass tangent uh, for yeah. Glycerine. Obviously, uh, what I feel is a more more of a played song, but obviously we have yeah. differing opinions. Let us know down in the comments if you know about Bush and you listen to alt rock radio growing up or anything. Even nowadays, do, do you hear Glycerine a lot? Like, what what do you feel is like an overplayed track? Let us know. And my favorite Bush song, I don't even think, I feel like it was a single and I maybe heard it twice on the radio, but it maybe that's why it's my favorite. So maybe it's not on this album though. <laughs> All right. So we'll move on to song number 11. What ultimately feels like the album ender, but there is another song after it. So song number 11, the penultimate track, Alien. Okay. Now I'm going to have you go first because I want to go first for the last one. So. You first, please. Fair. And actually, what's funny is this song has the most points that out of any song we've done so far. Nice. It's not even that it's a lengthy. Well, it is a lengthy track. Six and a half minutes. It's over your yeah. average. But like, I don't know. I feel like I had more to say for this one. Nice. Um, the bass at the start of this track is a great, great touch. It's not like the verses that we've heard previously already where it was just yeah. like, you know, the BDV that I've been saying before. I'm just going to get that on a hat now. BDV. And that's going <laughs> to that's gonna be our first merch. Nice. <laughs> And people will be like, what does that mean? Oh, you, you don't know Poser. Anyways, yeah. uh, so I do like the bass at the beginning of this track. Nice touch. Sounds really pretty. I like how we're kind of, we're really getting like subdued at the end of the album now. Like things kind of feel like more chill, which is actually really nice as compared to everything that's just been like, you've been fed like gravel on a spoon up to this point, but now you're finally getting the broth. So, I mean, like it's just yeah. working well on that. Um, as the song approaches the chorus, I can't help but think, like, why didn't we get more stuff like this earlier in the album? I mean, granted, we just had Glycerine, but, I mean, we're, it's like the last three tracks of the album, so, like, that doesn't count. I'm talking, like, why couldn't this be, like, song four or five? Like, something of, like, a settling point. Yeah. Which it wasn't, so it's, like, really, it just sucks that we didn't get more of this because I really liked it. Uh, the song balances its softer and heavier passages really well. It makes for, like, a really pleasant listen overall because you're kind of getting best of both worlds at this point. Um, definite closer vibes on this album. I probably should have made that my first uh, point, but like it's definitely good placement on the album. So I like where this is and I like what it does. 
the difference in this song sonically as compared to like all the other tracks it's like really nice and this this doesn't feel like just like a try hard grungy mess Mm -hmm. so there was a lot more for me to appreciate uh, about the song listening to it and actually kind of reminded me of like listening to maybe some of their other stuff too like older stuff so maybe this was an idea of where they might be heading a little later on yeah so i thought that was great my only other note is like um Again, I made a note about the uh, feedback ending. I think it was like track three. I made a note about it saying like, oh, it's a little too early. I do, as I said, I do like this kind of stuff. I do like the feedback outros and everything like that. That sounds weird. I mean, past episodes we've done like Nirvana, for example, where it's like nothing but feedback. Yeah. That was like number one song, more or less. But like, I felt this one was done a little poorly. They didn't really, if they took the feedback outro of song three and put it here, it would have worked way better. This one, most of it was just like the hum of one single note for the most part, yeah. which got really irritating. And it like um, cut off. Yeah, it didn't like even fade just, out. he's just like letting it hum into the amp and just like oh, we're done. Yeah, yeah. Like I noticed, I know I mentioned like previously about the post grunge mess and everything, but like this is where you need to utilize it if you're gonna do like a noisy outro. Like I get it's not a very heavy loud song, but. My best example of this, this isn't even in my notes, this is coming off the top of my head now. My best example of this is Hurt by Nine Inch Nails, Mm -hmm. where it's like, it's a ballad. It's a very quiet, sad song about like, you know, this is you after death type thing. But like the end of the song, it's like last minute is suddenly out of nowhere, blisteringly loud. And there's like looping feedback and everything. And just, it's super effective. Whereas like something like this, like, I don't know. You had a really good thing going and then just weird feedback that didn't really work. One note humming. Eh. Yeah. But I will say, though, uh, even if it spoils my place, we're near the end anyways. Probably my favorite song on the album. Yeah. So uh, we all know how I feel about a bass intro. Um, notable enough to write it down. Uh, Don't I have like... to write it. We just know. Okay. Now... I like that the album ends on a slow note. No back and forth with my energy or emotions. Okay. Asterisk that fucking point. Moving on. I am enjoying the overall lack of overdriven power chords here. It's definitely a like a literal breath of fresh air. Uh, I felt that it was the kind of song you feel so deeply that you are flooding your face with tears while driving down back roads at night where it just, it, it has that it. Now I don't know if it's just in comparison to the rest of the album where I just felt it a little bit more or if it actually just has that effect. Um, But it's just one of those ones where you just sit there and you just let all your emotions out. And then after you're like, I'm fine, we're good. And that's it. I like this one. That was that was all the notes that I had for that. And I know that your asterisk is coming up in the next track, but we'll get there in a second because I just want to yeah. note, like, it's interesting that you meant like mentioned the ending being like that too, where it's just kind of like you're getting your final emotions out and everything, just yeah. like letting it all go. And we, we like if you've been here long enough in the podcast, you'll know that like I've definitely made that known in past albums. So like I appreciate things like that. Yeah. Especially because spoiler alert, those songs are usually number one on my list. <laughs> Yes. Like, let's just go back to Cynic and Nine Inch Nails. Like, that that will literally point you in the right direction for what I'm talking about here. So, yeah, like, it, it, that's why I said maybe it kind of spoils my placement on the list. I don't care. That's fine. So you can cross that out on your list if you need to. But the idea is just, like, I do appreciate things like that. And so that's probably why it caught me a lot more in the end, too, just, like, enjoying that. I don't like the feedback ending in this one, but overall, the song worked really well. I agree. And with that, we come to the end of the album. No, we don't. There's one more 45 second track called X Girlfriend, like letter X. I'm not even like X Girlfriend. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, I'll just go real quick because you look. Uh, you're gonna probably gonna yell at your next point. That's fine. So very quick ones. A weird choice to end the album on. Was this a cover? Was it a demo? I'm not entirely certain. Your face looks like it's turning red from where I'm sitting. So I mean, like, I'm wondering if you just want to scream. One more note though. Quick and to the point, pop punk, it's fine. I wanted to go first because it would have been so much better if this was a hidden song because I liked how Alien ended. God damn it. This song is getting canned. That's it. It's not bad, but it makes me irrationally angry. 
Yeah, I don't know. So, sorry that, that I didn't let you go I, first. Yeah. That is why I moved. No, it's fine. I just wanted to yell. And I literally wrote it all the in all one sentence, all caps lock, cap locks. So I, I didn't hate it. Like I, I liked how it felt pop punky. Like it, it it was a different style from the rest of the album. But yeah, like I don't know. 40 like it's this is one of those fillers where it's like oh we need like a minute more on the album it's like, oh shit what should we do fucking point okay okay i literally ranted to my partner about this when i listened to it i ripped my headphones off and i'm like you have to listen to this i said listen to glycerin see how nice and beautiful this is listen to this see how nice and beautiful this is okay you'd think this was the end of the album it's fucking not okay if it was a hidden track where you had a minute and a half of silence after alien. And then this pops in. It's like, Oh, cool. Something special because it's not on the track listing. Okay. It has its own fucking track tight, like track title. Okay. Sure. The track title, maybe that's written on Wikipedia as a hidden track, but on the back of the record, on the back of the cassette tape, fuck off. That was dumb. I didn't like the way that it ended. It pulled too much of my emotions and it pulled anger out of me. The song, it's the song itself. Okay. The song itself self-contained regardless of where it was in the album. Fine. Yeah. It's not, it's not, it's not bad. It sounds fun. It's just a short repetitive, like idea. It's not even a song. Yeah. It was fine. It was punky and you know, like whatever, that's cool. But the fact that it was given a spot on the track listing pisses me off because it ruins the flow of the end of the, the album. Yeah, why can't, why can't they just do what like Corn does, where like most of their like I think their first four albums, there's just like a huge patch of emptiness after the final track, and then suddenly bonus track comes out of nowhere. Yeah, and you can make that sound however you want. You can have a fucking Hawaiian luau, like whatever. Oh, but when it's on the when it's on the track listing, it's. It is weighted the same way as the rest of them, and I don't think that that was cool to do that. On the example of that, I'll just say, if you, especially since I mentioned corn, if anyone's curious, just go listen to the song "My Gift to You" off of the "Follow the Leader" album. And then there's a huge patch of silence, and then there's this really bizarre fucking stoner metal track called "Earache in My Eye." Yeah. It's not a, I, I think it's from Cheech of Cheech and Chong that set, he sings it while the band plays it. I, I could be wrong. I think that's it, but I, I could be wrong. So correct me if I am. But the idea is it's just at least you get this all this time to like kind of process what you just heard. Because my gift to you is like an epic song to end an album with if you hear it. Yeah. And then, the, yeah, three minutes of silence. And then out of nowhere, this like weird track yeah. like this shouldn't be here type thing pops up. It, it reminds, just that reminds me of um, the last track. I think, I believe it's Coyote from uh, Better Than Ezra's deluxe album. And after a bunch of uh, silence, it's this weird, really crunchy bass heavy. Uh, it's completely different than the stuff on the album. And it's, it's fairly short. And all it is, is him repeating uh, pork and beans met sour krauten and just over and over with just crunchy bass. And it's ridiculous. But if that was a track on the album, I would I would fucking hate the album <laughs> because I'm like, the fuck is this? And then Weezer heard that like pork and beans. I like that. Let's write oh a my, song. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, we have a winner. Oh, Lord. Exactly. And as Weezer goes back in time to write pork and beans, we will end this review yes, here. Yes, please. That's the best transition I got. Go go watch episode nine. We did Weezer's Ratitude. Yeah. That, 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 that's not where the song is. But I mean, regardless, Weezer, huh, tie in. That's how we get views. Anyways, <laughs> we are at the end now of Bush's 16 stone album so thank you very much for making it this far with us we sure hope you enjoyed this conversation we feel like you probably have a lot to say so go ahead and let us know yes, down in the please. comments below social medias at rate the record podcast facebook instagram twitter and tiktok i guess if you want to comment over there but the thing is you can find it all on rate the record.ca that's the important part Woo-woo. Absolutely. That's it. Just I, I know I still list the social medias because just in case like someone might be like on like flipping through Facebook while listening to us or something like that or Instagram. Yeah. It's like, hey, rate the record podcast at rate the record podcast. Go search that and we're right there. So it just saves you a click. But hey, you can go down in the description below of wherever you're listening to this, rate the record.ca. You'll find everything you need there. Damn right. 
Absolutely. Uh, so you got a lot to say about this album. You probably have more to say, including, uh, you know, song rankings, album ratings, you know, what we do here on the show. So it's about time that we get into that now. So above our heads, boom, rankings have changed. There are names. There are numbers. And we need to put songs in what we feel are the appropriate positions uh, because that's just what we do here. Why not? Hell yeah. One day I'm just going to... F- Psych everyone, we're not even going to do song rankings, just immediately skip the album rating. Jump like, right wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. Or do this at the very beginning and then talk about it. Yeah, well, just April Fool's Day, we the do the album parts. rating first and then talk about it. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. And no one's going to want, that's, that's how you lose views. Nah. Also, people can just skip ahead in the episode. Please don't watch the whole thing. We appreciate the viewer watchership. Yes, please. I promise not to yell very often. What if they like you yelling? We need to. You, you then I will more. yell all the time. I will yell directly into the microphone. I won't because I'm really scared of. No, like, no, just sit at the back of the room and just that way we can get like the reverb of your voice throughout your room. So like we can tell your anger. Just like literal, just feel like a, a second camera shot of me walking to the other side of the room. And I'll just go to my Stomping. table. And, I'll go under my table and be like, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty oh, then, Lord. we have yes. songs to rank, so let's get into this now. I will get it kicked off. Uh, by the way, two question marks, all the rest are X's. Okay, let's see. I'm okay now. I'm just gonna go ahead and say one match out of optimism. I say Solely one out of optimism. I say one, but I'm also leaning towards none. Yeah, yeah no, nothing really clicked in hearing us talk about this. Where I was like, okay, this sounds like this might match. That's why there's only two question marks and no check marks. I feel like we're gonna have a lot of just one slight, <laughs> slight, yeah. Like last week, we had tons for Tomahawk. Oh my god, all every, like everything was a one off. Anyways, song yes. number twelve, Monkey, ex girlfriend. I, I knew that one was gonna be. Yeah, it made me so mad. All right, ex girlfriend number eleven, Swim. Bomb. Um, at least it's easy to write. That's that I can be very appreciative, <laughs> but I'll I'll give it two more points just for that. <laughs> no, nah, if it was that easy. Number yeah. ten, little things. Testosterone. I'll just put testes. Number <laughs> number nine, because I'm like ten years old. Number nine, body. Swim. Again, just super easy to me here. Number eight, bomb. Monkey. At least we're kind of grouping them all together. More or less, there's still opportunity here. Oh, not, not for here, though. Number seven, testosterone. Body. Yeah? Okay, okay, okay. Never mind. I take that back. I, I guess I can't know until you say something. Yes. Uh, I doubt this one, though. Number six, glycerin. Machine head. Or glycerine. I don't... Glycerine. How are we pronounce it? Uh, machine yeah. head. Okay. I actually thought that was going to be a little lower on the list there. I mean, like, like towards number one, I mean. Yeah. Uh, number five, everything zen. Come down. All right. We're running out of options. Yes, we are. Uh, we literally have one, and I can tell you it's not going to match. I, I, I promise you it's not going to match. I mean, maybe, but I doubt it. Okay. Anyways, number four, ex-girlfriend. Everything zen. Okay. That's right. Zen for that one to make it quick. Number three, machine head. Glycerine. Glycerin. This is interesting. I'm wondering now. This is This is the make or break right here. Number two... Come down. Alien. Ah, oh, damn close. Uh, it's a one-off though for like yeah. our top two there. Yeah, obviously number one, Alien. Yeah, Little Things. I I still love that song a lot. Although, although um, Alien just, it it was so close, but I just. It was, about it was just like. so different for me as compared yeah. to the rest of them. That's saying a lot considering it wasn't super different, Yeah. but it stood out to me as like, Aside from Glycerin being like a ballad, like the, the Alien stood out to me as like, this is actually kind of a fun little track. I like what they're doing. It's slowed down, but it's still kind of heavy. But like, yeah. it just feels different. It's, it feels better. Instead of a potato, they gave you a steak. This would be the steak to my potatoes. Yeah, yes, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. I, I can 100% like uh, just agree with that. Hell yeah. Well then, uh, I did say one or none, but I was leaning towards none. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah. there we go. Zero. Hey. You win. for 12. It's, it's been an interesting second half of the season. Let's just say that much for season oh, two. Jesus. Thankfully, season three is coming. That's when everything will change. Yeah. Yeah. 
there's still a few episodes before that happens, so I mean, we'll have to get through that. But before we get to those episodes, you know, we got to finish this one off with an album rating as we usually do. So let's go ahead, transition screens, and find out where Bush's 16 Stone lies. Go. Alrighty then, we have ourselves an album rating screen. We have ourselves a bunch of albums previously rated. And we also have Bush's 16 Stone waiting to be rated. Wow, just how thematical, I guess. I'm trying to be clever, but I'm not. Da, da, da. Thank you for the music. You're welcome. I, it would be better if I had a sound, uh, sound pad thing. I'm just going to call it something different because saying soundboard doesn't make sense. And I don't actually remember what it's called, but... You can call it a sound pad, it's fine, or sound board. You can call it trigger pad, it doesn't really matter. But the idea is you'll get it one day, but for now, until we do yeah. it, we have to rate an album. So we have Bush here, and because you chose this, I guess I'll be going first this time around. Right, sure. Now, obviously, listening to some of my reviews, I like, like certain points, but most of all, wasn't exactly pleased with the yeah. album. And my score kind of reflects that, although it's not as, I will say, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Take, take that how you will here in the score 64.58 percent i was gonna guess 61 oh. um so for i would have to say for the singles uh i like them a lot more than the uh rest of the songs um but i think this might be one of the times where i was a little bit more generous than you were and i did 72.5 like 0.5 or 0.5 0.5 okay just just want to make sure for that one 72.5 yeah. i mean again if you're like huge in the, like the 90s alt rock scene everything like that and the post grunge everything like that then yeah obviously this is going to be more tailored towards you so like that's yeah. just to be expected yeah but with that said that does bring us to our combined score of 68.54 percent which is definitely a c plus album but we just need to know where exactly on this c plus tier is gonna be is it near pitch shifter is it near nirvana i can't remember because we've done so many episodes i can't remember the scores individually and that is bullshit you always say hey you have to look at the list and tell me where it is that's fucking bullshit it's right between pitch shifter and nirvana you knew it you well, said- it, <laughs> it feels like one of the the, the top score type things <laughs> as compared to just being like you know may, maybe it's near eagles Ooh, try, i don't know like try to make so it's right here eh? when you've you've done the work already yes it is directly right there what, what did you say it was 68.54 54 that is exactly where it is yes is it far off of either one of these albums? Um, uh, Nirvana was 68.07 and Pitch Shifter was 69.42. All right. That's not bad. Yeah. Well, there you that's go then. Kind of dead center ish. Kind of, yeah. yeah kind of getting there. Yeah. Not bad at all. I mean, C Plus isn't exactly a terrible album territory, but at the same time, it's like, you know, needs improvement more or less, at least to our own standards, which means nothing at all. C Plus is a good drink, so. Yeah, okay. I Can I bring that up? How there was, a I think, an episode or two back when I said something about C Plus, you said better than Fanta. I didn't yeah. clue until I was editing. <laughs> I heard that. I was like, son of a bitch, I missed that joke. It is better than Fanta. It's more juicy. <laughs> uh, as a diabetic, I can't drink either. So, hey, I'm just going to go. I, I mean, I've had both my lifetime before I was diabetic yeah. even too. So, but regardless, I, I missed the joke. I was like, <laughs> that sucks. I, I bet she was very disappointed that I missed it. I was, but there are things that I will say under my breath that I really hope you catch afterwards. Sometimes I do. <laughs> Perfect. But while we ponder that, there you go. Bush is now C plus album material. Yes, not bad. It does make me feel a little bad for some of the albums that come after it. And I'm like, oh, I really wish that I could just, you know, redo these ones. But it's just like, would that really change too much in in the grand scheme of things? Would maybe they would change a position or two? And that's really it. Yeah, it's hard to say, but that'd be an entire redux on its own. Yeah, dang. All right. We have a C plus uh, apparently delivers delicious beverage as according to Savannah, but the, yeah, right. at the very least it, uh, you know, again, C plus is definitely not a fail needs improvement, but Hey, it's a passing grade. Take it as that. Yeah. Be, I, I was going to say, you must know. be happy considering that you picked the album in the first place. Um, again, I had only heard five out of 12 songs. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, uh, 
just from the singles that I did hear like previously um, and having mistaken three of them, like sort of, I guess, interchanging them, not really knowing what's what. I, I didn't really piece that together until I started listening to the album. And then it was like, oh, fuck, this whole thing's going to sound like this, isn't it? So, I mean, I wasn't let down by that, but uh, pleasantly surprised by the end and then angered immensely. So it was just a tug of war with my emotions. And um, it hasn't put me off the band because like, like, you know, like you said, hindsight, we do kind of hear where they were going in the future. You know, they kind of ditch at least 40 percent of what they were doing first album that kind of gets better and maybe the next so. couple albums are like badass after this i i personally don't know yeah. i haven't heard them so i don't know Yeah, who knows i mean maybe like a fine wine gets better with age you never know um but uh but yeah i i don't know it hasn't put me off on the band i'm still willing to listen to more of their stuff but i just don't know if i'm going to revisit this album in particular did and I know least... my score was kind of high, but it was just the songs I really liked. I really liked. <laughs> yeah, I really put it up there for you. Did you give yeah. Gavin Rossdale some cuteness points? <laughs> uh, maybe when I was younger, um, but now not so much. Um, uh, I don't know. Didn't it's, age too well, eh? eh not, not in my eyes, uh, but also as age, your preferences change. And uh, I don't want one that cheats on his wife. So hey. no thanks. No, thanks. Fair Shots enough. fired. Well, I mean, it, as long as it's proven, I mean, like, he can't exactly deflect those bullets. It's but true. anyways, we are here at the end of the episode, the end of the album, the end of everything. Not not so much the end of everything. I shouldn't say that. That's very uh, pessimistic. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming all the way to the end of this episode with us. We sure hope that you enjoyed what you've been listening to, what you've been hearing. Yeah. And obviously, we want to hear your opinions, too. So make sure you like, subscribe, comment, rate, share, follow, all those things. Again, help us build that commun- musical community. We want you to be a part of it. And we also want to hear your opinions on this album. Oh, yeah. What do you think about them? Song rankings, album ratings? Do you agree or disagree with us? Again, let us know down in the comments over on our social medias, which can all be found over at ratetherecord.ca. We are very curious all the time. And again, you know that we interact with the people who, uh, you know, t- talk to us on this channel here. So yeah. if you want to, you want us to see what you have to say and then we can comment on it, then by all means, here's your chance. Do it. It's right there. We're very lonely people. So we need people to talk to. So if you could just leave us comments and just even ask us how our day is, it would just, it would make, it would make the day that much better. Even if, you know, if we're having a bad day, just just reach out. Whoa, whoa, cut this part out in editing. You're supposed to smile when you say that, Savannah. Smile next time. Okay, come back in. All right, so this was a great episode. <laughs> yeah, please leave comments. Please. Do it. All right. Now that we're getting very intense, this is where we have to close out the episode. So once again, thank you very much for watching the episode. We sure hope you enjoyed it. And again, make sure sure you let us know what you hear. But just before we let you go, we usually like to give you a little uh, sneak peek idea of what we're going to be doing next week on the show. Episode 40 next week. We're another, I don't want to call it a decade milestone because it's not a decade technically, but you know what I mean. It's the four zero. That That we could have had a baby in this time. Almost 40 weeks. It could have had a midlife crisis by now. Oh, it. Dyed my hair blonde, got my ear pierced, wear Hawaiian shirts, buy a Corvette. Got bright red, brand new Corvette, depreciated. Oh, and divorced. Got to throw in a divorce. (laughs) Yep. Yep. With a a girlfriend that's 20 years younger. Absolutely. Got to find. Never mind. (laughs) (laughs) Moving on. Anyways, yeah. Here's your sneak preview coming up for next week. It is an album chosen by yours truly. By yours truly, I mean me. Because this week was Savannah, (laughs) so next week is me. We have a post-industrial... I can speak. Post-industrial act formed by a husband and wife. They released an EP, an LP, and then haven't been seen since. How stripes. We already did that. Too soon (laughs) to do it again. Damn it. So if we're ever going to do Elevent or anything, that's going to be like 20 episodes down the road. Excellent. Maybe we will do it. You never know. You'll have to keep tuning in to find out, like find out who's coming up next week. Find out who's coming up 20 episodes from now. Regardless, make sure you stick around to find out. So until we see you next week, we hope you listen to some excellent music and we'll see you next time. So take care, friends. Bye-bye.